morning. How's it going? Totally fine. Thank you for asking. My name is Vahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. Uh, Chad House, and I'm coming from Calgary, Alberta. All right, Canada. What's up, big guy? So let's dive into it. Think, how's the weather over there right now? A uh, little chilly today, but it's been good. It's been warm. We've had a good, warm summer. Cool, 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 cool. Let's dive into it. Thinking Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. When did you get a start? How did you get started? Uh, with the book, I think I was uh, uh, early 20s, um, and I read the book. Uh, I was boxing at the time. I was, like, doing something totally different. Read that book, started the own bit, my own business not, not too long after that, and have gone back to it pretty frequently, along with some of his other books. That is awesome. What are some of the principles that you're utilizing today in your business? Share with us those principles. Uh, making snap decisions, quick decisions, and sticking by them, I think, is the main one. Um, there's a lot of options out, the, out there these days as far as what to do with your business, uh, what to do with your life, and so forth. And we've kind of, or I have, I, I've, you struggle with, with choosing one thing and sticking to that one thing. So more than anything, it's probably that and auto-suggestion, just, you know, talking yourself into the right mind frame and mindset. I think those two things are probably as big as it gets uh, principles-wise. If somebody has not read the book Thinking Go Rich, yeah. and let's say you're at a gathering, I'm just picture. I just want you to picture this with me. Let's say you're at a gathering. Yeah. You got let's say a wedding or some type of a birthday party or something like that. I know you Canadians party hard, man. Yeah. Um, so let's say let's say you're at a gathering, yeah. and you're talking to some of your friends, and they have not read the book Thinking Go Rich, yeah. and you say, "I talk to myself." What do you think they will say? Well, say so you're nuts, but like, uh, yeah, you, you talk. Yourself. Do you see how it sounds when no, when they haven't read the book, and you're like, yeah, I talked myself into doing that. You know, I was talking to myself. I did auto suggestion, and uh, that. So, you know, they might think you're a little bit cuckoo in the head. So, how do you overcome that, or do you not tell them at all? Oh no, I'll I'll talk about it because uh, what's well, certain friends? All my friends are entrepreneurs. They're all. Uh, they're all successful guys, so we can talk about that stuff. But I'll go to the, we think, 1,200 words a minute, and we speak at about 100 words a minute. So even though we think we're thinking something, there's there's 30%, 40% other thoughts going in there, and we don't always have complete control over that. But if we talk it, we can override the, the thoughts, and we can kind of bring things into a more simplistic view and control what we're actually thinking about. Other than that, I don't – like we don't always control everything we're thinking about. We can go down some pretty dark roads or, or inefficient roads. So that's what I normally go to. So how important is it for you to surround yourself with other entrepreneurs? And my question that I get a lot on our channels is, what if I don't know anybody successful or millionaires that I could get close to? What would be the remedy for that? So give us some insight. How did you... Are these your friends that you grew up with, you went to school with, or are these people with intention you became their friends? So it, it, I lucked out. All, all the buddies I grew up with were we played all played decently high level sports, um, and then the natural transition was into business for each of us. So pretty much all my buddies are doing some entrepreneurial thing. Uh, most of them are uh, the closest ones are. So I lucked into that, but I you know you might not have fallen into that. Um, you can reach out to people, but I found that reaching out to people, you just want to provide value. Don't, don't like go in there wanting a friendship with someone you think that you should want a friendship with, just provide value to people. And it happens organically. The, the, the non-organic relationships where you're seeking a something from someone else, even if it's just a connection or whatever, I don't think that's the way to go. I think you got to just provide value to people and, and let it happen where it happens. So let's do an example, Chad. Okay. Vahid wants to contact you, and I'm going to do it through Instagram. I saw your live video. I liked it. Or I've been watching you. You're an influencer, and you have done certain things that I would like to do in my life. What would that message need to read well, for me to send to you, for you to say, you know what? I'm going to respond to this guy out of these other maybe 20 or 30 that reached out to me. 
Well, what I've does got, that message need to contain? Yeah, so I've got a website, I've got books, and I've got supplements. So if you, like I've done this where I've bought someone's books and gave them away to my friends, just said, hey, like here is a stack of books I bought of yours. I gave them away to a few buddies. Or um, like I've got a website, uh, approach people and, and write a really good article for their website. I've done that a ton. Uh, so it's just, what are they doing? What are they, uh, what's their business about? And how can you help their business grow in some small way, even if it's just buying a few supplements, buying a book, trying to get their their word out there and their business out there. I think that that's the best way to do it. Would you, would you say it needs to be long or does it need to be short? Short. How short? As short as humanly possible. As a, But do you think short message I'll be able to deliver what's my passion, what I want to do, and what my intention is? I don't think it's about you. I think it's just about the, the, the other person. If you're trying to make a connection with someone else, uh, just uh, keep things short because there's a lot of messages. You get a lot of messages. Uh, you just kind of scroll through the long ones and try to get to the question or whatever or, or the, the purpose of it. So the shorter, the better. Like, hey, I bought a bunch of your books, handed them out. Hope you're doing well. Follow up a month later. Follow up a couple weeks later or whatever. Provide value, though. Provide value. Now, my other question is this. When you provide that value, what are you trying to – should you say what your intention is or that intention automatically comes off that I do want to build a relationship with you? Yeah, but so like like uh, I think you're, you're, you got to be careful with your own intentions. You might want to build a relationship, but the intention should be to provide value. So get rid of the, the I want to build a relationship with everyone. Uh, and just start focusing on the providing value. And I think the other stuff happens. The relationship, if, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen organically. But uh, you got to think, like, a lot of people are, are, are contacted by a lot of other people. And you can't build relationships with every single person you come in contact with. So just provide some value. Have that as the intention. And if you don't have people around you that are, are great, buy books, you know. Buy books, watch videos, have those thoughts in your head, um, and don't have the negative thoughts in your head that some people can bring. So it's not always, so, if you don't have people around you, get books. My, my next question would be, how many connections do you try to build on daily basis or on weekly basis? Do you do that? Uh, infrequently. I, I don't do it that frequently. Like uh, I've got my friends who, who I... Uh, I got good, really good buddies. I'll, I'll try to build a connection, but I think a connection is built over a year, two years, whatever. I don't think it's a, especially with this, I don't think it's a, it's a one day, two day, one week, two week kind of thing. I think it's just, man, you're trying to make this make connection and then you might run into the person somewhere and you've got some back history to, to what you're going to talk to them about. That's, that's when something real happens. Got it. Now, Chad, if somebody who's watching this channel or, or, or our live session who has not read the book, Thinking Grow It's Cover to Cover, why would you say they need to go back and read the book? Uh, because you need, like, a lot of the times we don't understand what we're thinking, why we're thinking. And it really gives you a, a, a control and purpose to your thoughts. And a lot of the times, well, especially today, where the options are endless, we're marketing to, we have Instagram where we're just looking at other, the lives other, people's want to, other people want to show us. And we're not in complete control over what we're thinking. And I think that book, really, if you have a goal, if you want to live well, it gives you uh, real strategic uh, advice on to how to take control of your thoughts and your life and so forth. So it's just taking control of your future and your present. I think it's a great book. Love it. Chad, I want to thank you so much for being with us this morning and sharing that. Hopefully, we'll get to do more. But I, I've, what is, what's the topic of your book? So I've got, a, I've got two books. One's called The Lost Art of Discipline. That's on Amazon. And it's just about how to become disciplined um, and what discipline is. And then the other one's a nutrition book for men called The Man Diet. So it's just how to naturally increase your testosterone levels through nutrition. So those are the two books. Two That's cool. So now I'm intrigued. How do you become disciplined? Give me the short version of the book. <laughs> oh, the sh oh gosh, the short version of the book. Um, one simple, simple tip is, is setting the goal, 
And then I think the barrier that most people fall into is not doing what they have to do uh, right away. So if you, if you don't feel like doing something that you kind of know you have to do, get in the habit of doing it immediately and don't let time pass. Because a lot of the times you come home from a long day, we have reading scheduled, we have maybe filming scheduled, we have whatever scheduled, and we just pick up the controller and then 30, 45 minutes later, we, we realize we wasted time. So I think there's a barrier that uh, that ruins a lot of days, which in turn ruins a lot of lives. And that's just that moment where you're like, I don't really feel like doing it. I'm going to push it back a little bit. So as soon as you get in that little moment, do the hard thing. Do the thing you know you have to do. I agree with that. Discipline is doing things that you don't like to do. It, yeah, it's, it's doing what you want most instead of what you want now. Correct. Without losing any enthusiasm in the process. Exactly. And you feel good when you're disciplined. It feels great. You don't feel good when you lack discipline. You feel like a loser. True, true. Yeah. I wasn't going to say loser, but maybe non-productive. Okay, okay. But, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> everyone knows how they feel when they're not disciplined. It's a snowball Definitely. effect. Discipline has a snowball effect and a lack of discipline has a snowball effect. No, man, you called it the way it is. That's it. You, you called it the way it is. That's it. Um, I appreciate you sharing with us, Chad. Um, am I going to get a copy of the book? Am I going to get an autographed, signed copy of the book? Or do I need to go buy 10 of them and send a message to no, you? No, no, I'll send them to you. Yeah, let me know where to send them. I'll send both books. Yeah, I need three of them. My team, um, if I get one book and they don't get a book, then we'll start fighting over the book. And then nobody is, ends up reading the book because there's only one of them. So I'll send you that. As a matter of fact, don't do that. I'm going to go purchase it on Amazon. We're gonna, we like to support all the authors. So I'll purchase it on Amazon. I'm a big discipline guy. Yeah. I think if you don't have your discipline together, I don't know how you could be, become successful. To me, logically and emotionally, it doesn't make sense how you could potentially even think about success without having some type of a discipline in a specific field. You know, I'm not talking about be disciplined in all areas of your life, but there are certain areas that you want to be successful at. If you don't have your discipline together, I just, I, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, you can't expect anything good without discipline in some area of your life. You're just not going to, it's not going to happen. But do you, have you noticed that, I'm, I'm, I keep going longer for longer. I see a lot of people go to gym. Yeah. They're in good shape when yeah. it comes to physical and body or you know maybe emotions while they're there yeah. but i see a lot of their businesses is in shamble yeah. i see them having discipline in that area but they're not millionaires they're making a few hundred thousand maybe fifty thousand maybe eighty thousand yeah. my question to you is this why is it that some people will take discipline in that area and work really hard at it and get really scientific on it. I'm talking about how many calories, what this, what chemicals, gluten for free. I mean, they're fanatic when it comes to that. Like they know their stuff, yeah. right? When it comes to that area. My question is, why is it they don't transition into the business? So if they transition, wouldn't it be better? I know some people have done it, but why more people don't do it? Yeah, I think it's... uh. What's the a amateur comes from the word uh, the amore to love the, the the Greek word amore and I think it's uh, I think they're amateurs so the the amateur does what he loves so they might love fitness they do the fitness but a professional does what he has to do so they just don't do what they have to do it, it's it's a uh, it's it, what you do like who who you are is your habits it's what you do so it, and and it, what you really want is reflective in what you do so if you really want to watch tv and be lazy that's what you're going to do if you really want to build a business that's what you're going to do if you really want to do the gym stuff but you just don't want the business stuff you don't want the prosperity enough then you're not going to do it you're going to stick with what you love so i think they're just there's the amateur and the professional i think they're just being amateurs and we've all been there i agree with that because i've seen it many many times and i've seen the other side too I've seen a lot of business successful people that don't do the other side. So it's, uh, I don't know, I guess it, it, creating that balance, and I don't like the word balance because, you know, it, it just, it's, it's very subjective. Balance yeah. is very subjective. What's balanced to you may not be balanced to me, yeah. right? So I, it's, I, I know it's very, very difficult, especially if you're a businessman and you have the responsibility of supporting a staff employees running a business or if you're a fortune 500 you gotta you you gotta answer to shareholders you got investors all of these different things 
they do take a toll on you. So yeah. sometimes we lean on the business side and we forget the other side. But uh, I guess every single person needs to create that balance for themselves and they need to figure that out uh, on their own. I don't think it's uh, one size fit all. I don't think uh, we could put it in that category. Yeah, well, you just, it's a decision. Do do one thing well, do all things well. How you do one thing is how you do all things. So you think you got to think eventually if you're if you're letting one area of your life down, you're going to let other areas of your life down. So why not just be excellent in all things and 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 do the best you possibly can in each area? It's it's is it it's it's like is it that much more difficult than than the opposite? I don't know if it's that much more difficult. It's just the actual act of doing it. It's a decision, right? And we all make the wrong decision, and it's just a matter of making the right decision at the right time. Yeah, I think the decision. I just don't think those decisions serve you. Yeah, I don't exactly. think you're right or wrong. It, decision is a decision. It just may not serve you long term. So, Chad, here's my question. I see a big bookshelf in the back. Are you about to donate those books to our I, foundation? Are, have you finished those books, or you still need more time, brother? Man, I read I read the best books two three times through, so I gotta I gotta go through a few of them another another couple more times. Cool. Let me know when you're done with those because we're waiting. We're up. We're, we need a box of donation. We got a few students that we could definitely send out. Um, okay. What was it? Like a couple of months ago, I sent uh, one of our uh, influencers, Michael, some book, Thinking Gorish workbooks. Um, I had them sitting around for my agents, yeah. and we weren't using them this year. So I just packed them up. I think it was like 20, 30. Shipped them out, and I said, you know what? I told my agent. I said, you don't use them, you lose them. That's yeah. it. We're giving to someone that's going to put them to work. So let me know when you're ready to part ways with some of those books. I will. I will, 100%. You got it, brother. Have a fantastic time in Canada. We'll speak to you later. Thanks, man.